And turning your Bible to 1 John chapter 5, we're going to do an interesting study today on the dual Catholic Trinity. There are two Catholic Trinities, and uh, as we get more into the thing of um, studying this whole thing of the Trinity versus the Godhead uh, of the King James Bible, there's no Trinity in the King James Bible. I've used that term before, you know, again, we've been over that, but um, as we study this thing more and more, and I get more comments from you and more feedback from you, my viewers, brothers and sisters in Christ, um, it's, it opens up new things and new thoughts, and you go, oh, that's an interesting point. And uh, I really learn a lot from you out there, my viewers. Um, it's definitely not, I'm not the end-all answer to everything out there. But here's some interesting things. 1 John chapter 5, verses 7 and 8. Now, 1 John chapter 5, verse 7, I'll just say this real quickly. It's called the Johannine comma, if you want to really get into the technical manuscript evidence type of stuff. And they say, well, it was not in the oldest and blah, 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 blah. Uh, there's early church citations, church father citations and things, which I don't think much of church fathers, but there's early church father citations. There's, there is different manuscript evidence. And, of course, you just read the context. Um, if you just go to verse 8, then and the end, there are three that bear witness in earth. What's the end? It's a connecting to the thing before. If you leave out verse 7 there, which a lot of the new versions do, you know, it doesn't make any sense. This is he that came by uh, water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood, and is the spirit that beareth witness because the spirit is truth. And there are three that bear witness in earth. You leave out verse 7. No, there's... Verse 7, for there are three that bear record in heaven, and there are three that bear record in earth. Okay, But very interesting there. And there's so many levels to this whole Catholic, Roman Catholic conspiracy, if you will. Uh, it's really incredible stuff to get into. But my point is, 1 John chapter 5, verse 7, um, it is supposed to be in your King James Bible. It's supposed to be in any Bible. But just had to throw that in, in there. But let's read verses 7 and 8, and I'm going to show you here that, again, understand the concept, basic concept of Scripture. When God does something, when God does anything, Satan will always counterfeit that. Okay? You understand that if you study the Bible. 1 John chapter 5, verses 7 and 8. We're going to see this is describing the Godhead. All right? Uh, but the Catholics will take it and they twist it. And I'm going to show you why this thing of the Trinity is so important. It is literally the very core of Roman Catholic theology. I'm going to demonstrate that today. 1 John chapter 5, verses 7 and 8. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit and the water and the blood, and these three agree in one. Okay? Now, you say, how does this work out? I don't understand. How is this uh, proving that there are two Catholic trinities? Well... Let me show you. First of all, you have the Roman Catholic Trinity here. They'll symbolize it with a triangle like that. I'm going to try to draw this as dark and big as I can so you can see it there. Okay, now what you'll see in every depiction, you'll see you have the sun... Here, the Father, there, and the Spirit, there. Okay, hopefully you can make that out. I'm going to show you some pictures of it here. Um, if you've not seen this, uh, again, you see this thing here of, you know, the... Holy Trinity, and you see God the Father there, and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Of course, these aren't you know real pictures; just an artist, Catholic artist rendition. But notice the upward pointing triangle behind the Father's head. Show you another one here. Again, we see this one here, and notice the upward pointing triangle behind the Father's head again. Again, you see that there. Here's another one. All the weird little supposed cherubs down there. It's ridiculous not cherubs. Another one, again I've shown this in my study on the Catholic Trinity thing, and again see the triangle behind God the Father's head 
and stained, stained glass window here of the supposed Trinity. Again, you see it there. And I mean, you know, you can go on and on and on. So we've got this one covered here. But here's the second Trinity of the Roman Catholic Church. In fact, I'm going to show you the pictures of this one first, and then we'll actually draw it out. Here you have this one, this uh, little Jesus or whatever there, and you have Mary on the left, Joseph on the right, holding a bouquet of flowers, very manly of him. Just kidding there. Again, here you have Joseph, Mary, and Jesus. Jesus sitting on Mary's lap there. Let me get you the next one. Trying to get to it here. Another one there. Another smaller one. An older one there with the... Uh, I guess that's some Greek writing there. And a little uh, baby Jesus looking actually like a little boy or something there. It's kind of a weird picture. I'm not sure that might be it. There's an older one here. Let me find that quick. There's another one with Jesus. The blonde haired Jesus there with a little pale white boy. <laughs> Okay, and here you have another one, and uh, Jesus married Joseph there. It looks like French underneath it. So you have, what do we have there? You have this. And you have, we'll say, Joseph, Mary, and all the different depictions. Sometimes Joseph and Mary are switched at the top there. But in every single one of them, they're always above Jesus. What do we have here with these two Catholic trinities? Well, you have the one from heaven right here, the Holy Trinity in heaven. But then you have the Holy Trinity here on earth. And what do you get when you combine the two? Did you ever see that symbol before? Once or twice, perhaps. <laughs> but you'll see this thing of JMJ. I remember there was a radical Catholic that wrote uh, to us back many years ago, and uh, he signed at the bottom of his letter, he said, J slash M slash J. And I thought, and I, I asked a bunch of people, I said, what does this mean, JMJ? And there's a former Catholic, and he says, that means Joseph married uh, Jesus. Joseph married Jesus, yeah. Okay. Let me show you a couple pictures of that. There you have a JMJ hospital in India. Hmm, Interesting. I thought this was kind of interesting. JMJ, Jesus, Jesus Moses, Mary and Joseph, uh, auto decal. And it says, JMJ, I love you, save souls. I thought that was kind of interesting. You know, I love you, save souls. You ever hear these Baptists and they get all about, we're about saving souls. Like it's some kind of a ultra spiritual thing that Catholics wouldn't dare say. But they do. Here you have a JMJ Provincialate, again in India. JMJ College of Nursing. Let's see if I have the screenshot of this. I'm not sure if I have it in this one. Um, but the JMJ thing there that we just showed you, the School of Nursing in India, was founded by a Jesuit. I'll put the screenshot of that up there. You can see that, JMJ College of Nursing. And again, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph Ministries. Yeah, right there it is. Okay, I have the screenshot right here. Founder, Father Matthias Wolf, SJ, Society of Jesus. A Jesuit-founded college with JMJ. Hmm, how about that? That's rather interesting. There you go, another picture of the JMJ Hospital. Rather telling, actually. But let me explain to you the occult significance of this whole thing. Why is this symbol such an evil symbol? Well, it's a very ancient symbol. This hexagram has one, two, three, four, five, six points. Hmm. Could it be, you know, we've talked about this before, you know, what is this mark that will be upon the forehead eventually? Uh, could it be that some people, Catholics will say, 
in the time of Jacob's trouble? Could it be that they're going to have the trichatra? See if I can draw this. Not going to be, not real good at drawing this one, but. Okay, kind of bad drawing of it, but could it be the Catholics will have this thing, the three-pointed star, and the Jews will have that, kind of like what Hitler did. Again, I'll put up a picture here, the Jude, you know, the German word for Jew. Hitler was a Roman Catholic. Why was he marking him with a hexagram? Well, again, understanding the occult. The upward pointing triangle is male, the downward pointing triangle is female. You know, and I got to be a little graphic here, I'm sorry, but representing the private areas of men and women. And what do you get when you put the two of them together? You get the sex act, fornication. Okay? That's what you do when you get the two of them together. And it's ironic because it can also be interpreted another way. This can also be a symbol for sodomy. Why? You have a man that acts effeminate. Man and woman together in one person. A man that acts effeminate. A woman that ask, acts masculine in one. A lesbian. Hmm. Very deep meanings here. Okay. Very interesting stuff. But let me show you a bunch of other pictures of things that use this. Organizations that use this. Here I have a picture of a Masonic, Freemasonic state police um, logos and patches and things like this. You see, again, what is the Masonic symbol? You have the compass like this. Here's the compass. Okay? And then underneath it, you have the square like that the Masonic symbol, and you have the G inside of it, like that. Well, all you got to do is just connect a line here and connect a line there. You got a hexagram. Rather interesting. How about this picture here? The Pope with his miter on, and on the miter is a hexagram. I find it interesting that Ratzinger there, Joseph Ratzinger, or Joseph Ratzinger, was a member of the Nazi youth movement, Hitler Youth. Oh, he's maybe he's trying to, you know, honor the memory of the Jews by wearing the hexagram. No, because the hexagram is a holy symbol to Roman Catholics. In fact, I believe personally that it's the symbol of their ownership, the seal that they put on things. I'm going to show you why I believe that. I mean, Masons, the Freemasons, they do go back to Roman Catholicism. Again, they're subservient to the Jesuit order. A lot of people say, Jewish Freemasonry runs the world. You're quite foolish. You're quite foolish. If you think Jewish Freemasons run the world, uh, you might want to look into that a little bit more. They don't run the world. Okay? They're subservient to the Jesuit order. Let me show you another picture here. Here you have the Los Angeles County, I did a whole video on this, uh, Sheriff's Department uh, badge, and it's a hexagram. And in the corners of the hexagram, you get that triangle, that thing that, you know, I'm not going to be able to, well, I'll draw it down here. It goes like this, and like this, and like that, and like this, and like that. That's a symbol for NAMBLA, National American Man-Boy Love Association. And who are the ones that uh, molest children? Well, that would be the Catholic priest. And who was one of the founders of NAMBLA? A Catholic priest. Hmm. And what is it again? It's a triangle. A triangle within a triangle. Interesting. And I find it also interesting that one of the practices in at a Jesuit retreat, and you can look this up again, is walking the labyrinth. They'll have a labyrinth. Now, it's not this shape here. It's generally a circle, and you go in and things like this. But it's you walk this labyrinth, part of the, the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius Loyola, of, uh, Loyola. Loyola, excuse me. Interesting. Here you have a, a tile mosaic on the floor of 
uh, St. Paul's Cathedral. There you have a hexagram with a cross inside. At a Roman Catholic church? Hmm. Again, St. Cantius Church. Again, a hexagram with the PX, the Greek there for Christ, essentially. The Greek symbol for Christ. In the middle of a hexagram. Port security, United States Coast Guard, law enforcement. And there's law enforcement all over the country that has this uh, hexagram as their symbol. Rather interesting, I would say. Here you have the uh, inside of the, let's see I have it written here, the Knights of Columbus Incarnation Dome. Hmm. The largest Catholic church in America is the Church of the, I got it right here. I actually have this Catholic Family Bible, and there's a big picture of it here. It says on the previous page, the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception, Washington, D.C. Right there. And lo and behold, what do we have right here? Hexagrams with the fleur-de-lis, the Jesuit symbol, right in the middle of it. And this dome right there, that dome, is called the Knights of Columbus Incarnation Dome. And I'll show you a picture here of the inside of it. If you look up underneath it, if you go inside, look up at the thing, this is what it looks like right here. And what's in the middle? A hexagram. Hmm. How about that? Here are the uh, five hexagrams that go around the top of that dome. All right, you have one with a fleur-de-lis in it. You have the cedar of Lebanon, the tower of ivory, star of the sea, intertwining monograms of A and M. Hmm. Find that to be rather interesting. Here you have uh, Knights of Columbus motorcycle gang. I mean, how about that? That should make you kind of think. There's a side picture of this uh, huge big cathedral in Washington, D.C. There again is the inside. You can see the dome there, the incarnation dome of, for the Knights of Columbus. See if there's any other pictures. Uh, we'll get back to that fourth degree thing. Here's, a, here's again another huge big Catholic cathedral. Not sure where that one's at, but a huge big pen or a hexagram again up on the cathedral. Security officer, state of Illinois. Hmm. And again, let's let's just think about this symbol here for a minute. This thing right here, the hexagram. First of all, you have Catholics use it. I've demonstrated that. I've showed that it's all over the place. Okay, the Knights of the Knights of Columbus Incarnation down there in Washington, D.C. Big time on that. Really, really weird stuff. Hitler used it as a Roman Catholic to identify Jews. And I would say it could possibly have been kind of a dry run, so to speak, for the coming Mark of the Beast. Catholics could get this one. The, you know, the Christians, they get the three-pointed star showing the Trinity, but the Jews get that one. I mean... Kind of makes you wonder who really owns the state of Israel or the nation of Israel. Who really controls it? Interesting. By the way, don't ever wear that thing around your neck. You can support the Jewish people, but you don't dare wear that thing. All right. That is not a symbol for the Jews. All right. Um, and again, you know, I, I need to say this because, you know, people just, they love to just hate on the Jews that are over there in Israel. Okay. The Jewish leadership is in bed with the Vatican. They are subservient to the Vatican. There's no question about that. What I'm saying is when I say I support the Jews, I'm talking about the Jew on the street. They have a right to that land. Whatever people want to say and things like that, they have a right to the land. But I'm not going to attack every single Jew out there because of their corrupt government that's in bed with the Vatican. I mean, be like somebody saying that I'm as corrupt as the American government because I'm an American. Well, that's stupid. Right? Don't don't attack the Jews just because their their leaders were wicked. All right. But again, another group that uses this, the Freemasons, as we talked about, you know, earlier. Witches. You know, again, the witches use it. 
You'll see it on witchcraft spellbooks. They use both. They'll use the Trichetra, and they also use the Hexagram. It's their, one of their most evil symbols. They'll conjure up devils and stuff like this. Another use for the Hexagram. Carry it around in your wallet if you are an American. Please notice what we have here. Connect the dots. You got a hexagram with a little star on the inside. What do we have over here? An upward pointing triangle. If you connect the A and the S with the O, the new order of a secular world there, announcing the conception of a new order that's secular, without God in other words. You connect the A, the S, and the O, you get a hexagram. Interesting. Who owns America? Kind of weird. And again, you know, we could, we were just going over this thing, my wife and I, we were driving along and it was just like, you know, this connection and that connection and it would tie into this and tie into that. Again, another thing in the occult is they say, as above, so below. You'll see people and they'll do occult hand signals. They go like this, as above, so below, you know. In other words, the, the teaching of duality and things and, and, you know, Father Earth, or excuse me, Mother Earth, Father Sky. I mean, there's so many, so much paganism involved with this symbol here. The upward pointing triangle, the downward pointing triangle. You know, I mean, it'd take me hours to, to take apart this whole thing here. I mean, it's just, it's crazy. Another thing that they'll do, the Catholics will do, is they have, you know, IHS. Do you ever see that? The uh, IHS, like that. You'll see that sometimes. Again, another symbol of the Jesuit order. And what you have is, what, how do you break that thing down? And, of course, they say, you know, it means uh, in uh, Jesus' salvation or something like this. Um, occult symbols have multiple meanings, as I've been demonstrating here. But let's see how this thing would break down. Okay, the again the pagan trinity, if you will. You have Mary is Isis, the female goddess. Joseph would be Horus. Jesus would be Set. I H S. Pretty crazy stuff. But uh, let me see what I need to cover here yet in this thing. Um, oh, another thing I want to say, and that is uh, this thing of well, how does it work out? You know, 1 John chapter 5, verse 8. Again, another layer of this deception here of their, you know, second part of their trinity. How did it work out there? It says, and there are three that bear record in heaven, the... Uh, Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. That's verse 7. These three are one. Verse 8, And there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit, and the water, and the blood. Hmm. What do you have with Catholicism? The Spirit, representing, you know, the church. The Knights of Columbus symbol is, I'll put it up here for the fourth degree. Did you ever hear somebody, boy, they really gave me the fourth degree? Hmm. But you have the dove coming down to the earth. And again, what do you have? The spirit at the top of the Trinity symbol over here. Here you have, and there's actually one of the pictures, I can put it up again, of this earthly quote-unquote Trinity. You have the Holy Spirit up above. Very interesting. The spirit there, the spirit that's of, you know, covering the church. The fourth degree, Knights of Columbus symbol, is a dove going down to the earth. You have... A lot of the other religions out there too, like the Methodists, they have the same thing, the dove coming down. Very interesting. Um, but you would have there, so that's the spirit, the spirit there that's coming to the church. How about the water? What's that about? Well, with Catholicism, uh, baptism is what brings you into the church. The rite of baptism, it's one of the seven sacraments. It removes the stain of original sin. Well, then how do you keep getting your sins forgiven? Um, by drinking blood in the form of wine 
And they teach that the wine is actually the blood after the priest does his magical stuff to it. Hmm. I'll show you another depiction of this Catholic concept. I mean, again, they use this thing. It isn't just, you know, worked out this way here and here. They'll use it in other means too. Let me show you another one. Here we have this uh, New American Bible, St. Joseph edition. I've shared this in other studies, but look at this. Observe another type of way that they could make this double trinity. You have St. Peter, St. Paul, and the Holy Spirit. Downward pointing triangle. Down here, you have priest, bishop, and pope. Upward pointing triangle. You put the two together. You see? See how that works? Pretty weird stuff. So that's why, you know, we're going to get into some more stuff here, but that's why you get these, these you know, closet Catholics that come out and they oh, I'm a Bible-believing Christian. So they get so upset about this whole thing of the Trinity and things. Why? Because it's the center of their whole system. It's extremely important to them. But let's uh, look at some more scriptures here. Amos chapter 5. Actually, we'll go to uh, the one in Acts. We'll go to Acts, the, the book of Acts, chapter 7. I'm going to show you that this thing goes way back. And Catholicism is just a continuation of mystery Babylonian religions, is what it is. Acts chapter 7, verses 42 and 43. Then God turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven. As it is written in the book of the prophets, O ye house of Israel, have ye offered to me slain beasts and sacrifices by the space of forty years in the wilderness? Yea, ye took up the tabernacle of Moloch and the star of your god Remphan, figures which ye made to worship them, and I will carry you away beyond Babylon. So the Jews were picking up pagan symbols from Babylon. Paganism from Babylon. You see it? The star of your god Remphan. Very interesting. And he's quoting back in the book of Amos. So go back to your Old Testament there. The book of Amos. Not a whole lot changes when you get to understand the Bible. Amos chapter 5, beginning in verse 25. Have ye offered unto me sacrifices and offerings in the wilderness forty years, O house of Israel? But ye have borne the tabernacle of Moloch and Kion, your images, the star of your God, which ye made to yourselves. Therefore will I cause you to go into captivity beyond Damascus, saith the Lord, whose name is the God of hosts. By the way, stars in the Bible are often representing, you know, angels, which is kind of an interesting thing. So they are worshiping an angel with this whole symbol right here, represented by a star. Now, don't tell me, and I, you know, there's, like I said, there's so much more we go over in this, in this video, but I mean, this thing is way, this is a really, really big subject. I mean, just do a, a search for a hexagram. I mean, they're just, they're all over the place. And it's directly tied into the thing of 666. Six points. 666. You see? And you can make it this way. A 6 here, a 6 here, a 6 here. You know, I mean, it's just incredible. This whole thing. Let's see if there's anything else here. I mean, we just, we were literally writing down notes and just like, man, it just ties in with this and it just ties in with that. I mean, you know, yeah, I mean, we, we have so many things here, just like we get into so much stuff, but I'm just, you know, just putting this thing out there because it's just like, you know, truth is as we get closer to the rapture and the time of Jacob's trouble and everything else that's coming in there, more and more is going to be revealed. And um, a lot of the evil that the devil has been preparing and planning and things like that, a lot of it's going to come out. And um, this thing right here is just amazing this whole system and uh you know it shows how just how big this vast conspiracy is i know um 
one of you wrote in the comments about, you know, could you do a video showing all the connections with Catholicism ruling this and ruling that? I can't. It's just too big. I, I don't have the time to sit down and put everything together. It's just, you know, that would be something for someone else. I mean, I, I get, I mean, if it was just like my job was exposing Catholicism, well, okay, I could probably do something. I mean, even that would take me a long, long time to do. But I get a lot of people. I'm, I, I help people. I write to people. I talk with people. You know, I'm more than just a guy making videos exposing things. Um, so a lot of it is just like a lot of what I do in ministry. Um, Lord will show me stuff like this, and I bring it out, and I say, okay, here, you understand the basics? Okay, there you go. Do your own research. Again, I want you to confirm what I'm saying. When you start to look at big world powers and doing things and stuff like this, check and see if they're involved with knighthoods, Knights of Malta, Knights of Columbus, the Jesuits themselves. Do they have Jesuit training? Do they have Jesuit education? The Jesuits are, again, masters at training people how to overtake governments and and overthrow, you know, whatever. I mean, it, it, they get in there and they can, there are certain things that you can do in social situations where you can c cause um, divide and conquer. Again, study military strategy, um, the Hegelian dialectic, see how uh, they can take over countries. You come into a country and you want war in that country because, again, you're profiting from the war industry, but the people are getting along. So what do you do? You come in and you sow division. You give weapons. I'll just use Cambodia as a, you know, Cambodia, Laos, Thailand, the uh, Golden Triangle over there. Um, the Vietnam War was about heroin, the heroin trade. But you get in there and you say, okay, um, we're going to go to the um, communists in those countries and we're going to arm the communists against the Buddhist people there. Right? Well, how do the Buddhists fight it? They're going to get wiped out. Well, you go to the Buddhists and you say, hey, sell us drugs and we'll sell you weapons. See? You create a division there. Now, the Buddhists are forced to make, you know, make the drugs, manufacture the drugs for the American CIA and again, CIA. Look who founded the CIA. You know, Roman Catholic. I mean, it's just like, just, just anytime you see evil in the world, trace it back through almost every time, almost every situation, you're going to find that the person was a open professing Roman Catholic or part of a Roman Catholic uh, secret society like the Knights of Columbus, the Knights of Malta, the Knights Templar, the Jesuit order, whatever. You're going to find that or you're going to find that they were educated as a Catholic at some point in time, or they answer to a Catholic. Again, you know, just do this research. All my job, I can't possibly go over and trace every single little evil thing that they've ever done. I can't do that. I just give you the basics, so you can see what's going on there. You know, don't fall for the lie that the Jews run the world, Zionism runs the world. No, they don't. No, they don't. The Jewish hierarchy is in bed with the Vatican. The flag that they fly is based on this Catholic Trinity. I mean, it's just, you know, you have Father God, Mother Church. Bring the two together. I mean, it just, it just boggles the mind when you look into this whole thing and see all the connections and everything else. I mean, I, we still discover things, and it's just so funny. I mean, it's like we see corruption, and I go... Well, let's see where it goes back to. Who founded this thing? Who did this or who did that? And it goes back. It's a Catholic every single time, nearly. I, don't, I can't think of too many instances where it doesn't tie back to Roman Catholicism in some way. I mean, it's just, it's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. And you say, what's it all about? Confirms the book. This book will tell you what's uh, going on in the world, what the reality of it is. So, you know, this is just something that I, you know, I was starting to do the research into this thing, and I'm just going, okay, this is getting into a whole lot of areas. Um, and I just thought, you know, I just need to come out with this thing. I need to get it out there for people just as a, to show you some really hardcore stuff, but that will inspire you to do your own research and confirm. Don't, don't just take what I'm saying, you know, as just, you know, Brother Brian said it must be true. Do your own research 
anytime that you see evil and things and bad stuff in the world, look into it. Trace it back. Who are these people a part of? What are they part of? Are they going to Catholic universities? They're going to be trained in, in uh, ways to take over countries and, and things like this. It's all about subservience to the Pope. So uh, that's going to be it for this study. Um, again, like I said, some pretty, pretty crazy stuff. Um, but check it out. Check it out. I mean, do some searches for this thing right here. And you're going to see it's tied to so many different organizations. And, you know, a lot of it, I'll be, I'll be honest, it's just speculation on my part as far as the Mark of the Beast is concerned. But, you know, Hitler did it. He put the this thing, the Star of David. It's not the Star of David. You can't find that anywhere in the Bible. This, uh, you know, six-pointed star, the hexagram, he put it on the Jews. Why? Well... I believe is a sacrifice for the Roman Catholic Church. But could it be that the in the time of Jacob's trouble that this is going to be for the Christians and this will be for the Jews? Because that's really the only two groups that are going to be there. Again, you know, I just saw uh, Rebel Media. There's a, a woman there, Faith Goldie, this reporter. And uh, she's reporting and she's calling for a new crusade against Islam. It's happening. I know there's some Muslims that watch this channel. You better wake up. Because you see, it's going to be forced conversion. It's going to be a, a situation where you're going to be forced to convert to Catholicism or they're going to kill you. And I care enough about you to tell you the truth. That's what's coming. You think that, you know, well, Muslims are you know very powerful. Islam's very powerful and everything else. There's a lot of them and all this stuff. Catholicism is the one that has the money. They're the ones that have the power, the military strength you know, superpower and things like this. They hold all the nuclear arsenals and things. They can wipe out Islam in no time at all and forcibly convert those that don't, they don't, you know, kill off. This, I believe, is what's coming for the Catholics, for the Jews. And, of course, after, you know, the Muslims get wiped out, they're going to start going after the Jews again and wiping them out. And again, I mean, you can you can study this thing. I hate to keep going on here, but you can study the thing. Roman Catholic writings, they're saying they have the right to rule the world. And there is only one true religion, and that is Catholicism. So check it out. Uh, I think that's going to be it for now. Thank you very much for watching.